My name is Cameron Salerno. I'm currently a sports journalist at the Sacramento Bee. I've been a journalist covering sports in the Sacramento area for seven years. I started when I was 15 and a half at the Rosso Press Tribune and worked my way up to the Sacramento Bee. Uh, I primarily cover high school sports in the Sacramento area, but I've also dipped myself into covering the San Francisco 49ers, Sac Republic FC, and this fall uh, slash winter, I'll be helping out with Sacramento Kings coverage. Uh, I'm really excited. I love this area. I love covering recruiting, love covering the local stories of athletes in this area. I think this area is super rich with talent, and it just is really exciting to have uh, sports back in the area after not having it last year because of COVID. Uh, I mean, I started off at, as an intern at the Roosevelt Press Room when I was 15 and a half. I was lucky enough to get an opportunity by Stephen Wilson, who is one of my good friends today still. And I was in his wedding over the summer. And so he gave me my first shot of getting into this industry. And so I used that as a platform for two years to get my foot in the door and also cover local teams in the area like Wood Creek, Granite Bay, uh, and other schools in the Sierra Foothill League. Uh, but like you mentioned before, I branched myself out two years ago to covering schools in the Sacramento area, such as like Elk Grove and Sheldon, because Sheldon basketball is really good. And that's really when I started getting into covering sports in the area was basketball season when Sheldon was making their state championship run. And so I that's where I really got started. And, and obviously... Social media is a great platform, and that's how I connected with a lot of people around in California and across the country. So I think it's a huge and it's a great platform to connect with people. Well, biasly, I my favorite moment of my career so far was covering the NFC Championship game, San Francisco 49ers versus Green Bay Packers. I grew up watching the 49ers during the Smith and Kaepernick era in the early 2000s or 2010s, uh, rather. And so it was just awesome to see experience that I got to go in the locker room when they're celebrating and so that was just awesome to see uh them celebrating this win the NFC championship game I, I don't think I'll ever forget that moment I mean it's better than them saying we hate Cameron so I think that's something that I really uh appreciate it's definitely I'm honored that people love me that much to recognize me in that way and obviously that's something that I think any reporter hopes and dreams of that they're acknowledged and they're loved by the people they cover. And obviously we don't have the chance to uh, write all those good stories sometimes. So it's good when we're, we get good recognition for the stories we write. Uh, I just think covering student sections is, I mean, it's all part of the high school experience. You, uh, you go to school, you play a sport, you're part of the student section, you're part of clubs. And so I had a really good high school experience growing up. And so I know what it is, what a good student section entails. I know what a good high school experience looks like. And so, I mean, obviously I'm not far removed from high school, which is I think a good thing and also a bad thing. You know, I mean, it's I'm glad I moved on that chapter of my life, but it's also cool to recognize and still cover because I appreciate having a good student section, also having a uh, good school spirit as well. It's it, it just, it's covering the stories that maybe you don't want to cover or also the stories that are hard and impact you. I mean, there's stories I've covered that are sad personally and you see the emotion of the people you talk to and you see how that makes them feel. And obviously you, you, you feel bad for them also. And it's, it's, it's really unique. And I think the positive, how I come out of it is uh, I get to tell their story. I get to say how they're doing, how it's really changed their life and impacted them in a positive way and how they use this negative to uh, create a positive. And I, I actually just tweeted that yesterday that uh, you have to make, positive out of negative and I'll tell a story that I haven't told anyone yet which because it happened yesterday so I've been covering the San Francisco 49ers this season for Sacramento B helping out uh, our main guy Chris Biederman he, he does amazing work so I drove to Santa Clara obviously that's two and a half hours it's, it's a long drive and obviously I enjoy covering the 49ers I enjoy the experience of going in the press box but when I got there, I parked, and I, I went up to the media will call, and they didn't have my pass. And so I, I, was, I was confused. I was concerned, obviously. And so I called my boss, and he told me that he forgot to put in my pass request. And so I was in a bad spot, and I tried to contact the uh, communications people with the 49ers because they denied people's requests uh, earlier in the day. They could not accommodate myself. So I was stuck and I, I didn't know what to do. I almost, I'm, I'm, I consider uh, myself someone who is strong-willed and has uh, 
someone I I I can handle uh, stuff like that pretty good, but almost I was at the point of almost tears because I was just so frustrated. And obviously, it was a situation I couldn't control, and obviously, something I really learned from. But I used it as a positive. I went out and talked to fans. And I created a story, and then I went on StubHub and bought the cheapest ticket possible and sat in the stands like a normal fan. So, I mean, I, I, I obviously it couldn't turn into a really bad day, but I try to make the most out of it. And obviously, it's, it's something that I learned from because. You have to be professional sometimes and not everything's going to go your way in life. And I think that's how that applies in journalism and also uh, life as well. I just, I learned how to be professional, really. It, it's life is, life is crazy and life is not always going to throw you a curveball. And so I could have, I could have done handled that a lot of different ways. And I, I'm thankful for Joe Davidson, who I work with at Sacramento Bee. I called him. I said, I just need an event. Like I was, I was frustrated. That's why I was on literally the verge of tears almost because I was just so upset at what happened. Just not, I was not upset at anyone. I was just upset at the situation. How, how could I drive two and a half hours to spend my entire Sunday? Because I just wanted to leave. I, at that point, I was like, this sucks. Like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling down. I was just, and I was texting a few people who I, I know personally, like, well, my girlfriend, my mom, and Steven, who's my old boss, and Joe, and my uh, my boss at the Sacramento B. And so, I mean, they're all just, they felt bad, and they all tried to help me. And I, I, I was kind of, uh, not a bad sport, I guess, but I was just in a headspace where I didn't want to talk to anybody, and I was, I was pretty upset. But I used it as a positive because... Joe told me, hey, make a story out of it. You're already there. And I, I at first I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I just want to feel bad for myself. I want everyone to feel bad for me. But at, at some point, it kind of clicked it. Like, in my head, I was like, I, I need to be professional. Like, this is stuff like this is going to happen all the time. Like, not this moment. I hope that never happens again because it was obviously very bad. But stuff like that's going to happen in life. And you have to just learn how to handle adversity. So I, that's what I learned the most out of it. I learned how to handle the adversity. I talked to fans. I went and talked at tailgates and I wrote a story out of it and I went to the, the game and I sat in traffic for three hours like a normal person and I think it, it made me appreciate also too just like being alone and just like I hadn't honestly I've, I've covered 10 games at Levi's Stadium with the 49ers I've never walked around that stadium and so it was cool to just walk around and just see the people see the fans see the food the, the concession stands and so I think it was just really cool I obviously wish that never happened but you know, everything happens for a reason in life. So I think we all have to work together. I mean, we all have different stories. We all have different goals. I mean, my goals and our goals at the B are different than those of at ABC 10, KCRA 3, and the other local news stations and other papers. At the end of the day, we're all trying to accomplish the same somewhat goal, tell stories and promote local athletes. Obviously, people like their job more than others, and I'm in a position where I love my job. I love what I do. And I don't think some people can't say the same, which is okay. And that's that happens. I mean, some days I hate the job just because I want to take a break and I, I feel overwhelmed. But I think we can all just work together to promote uh, good stories because we all work together. I mean, I've, I've gotten to know a lot of the people in the Sacramento area who are reporters and people have left over the years. But for the most part, I know most of the area uh, reporters. So they're pretty friendly and we we get along. I mean, we obviously have that competition with one another. But at the same time, like I said, we have the common goal of we want to uh, produce good content. Uh, okay, so uh, technically I wasn't reporting, but I, I got to see Jake Browning's first high school football game in 2012. I was a, I was a student at middle school, local middle school, and I decided to go to the Wood Creek Junior, or Wood Creek game. I was with some of my friends where I think I was in sixth grade. Uh, Browning threw for 10 touchdowns, 700 yards. So he's up there. Uh, Mount Rushmore for me, I think I would go. Uh, Jake Browning, I got to see uh, um, Jonah Williams play, left tackle for the Bengals. Uh, he played Alabama. Uh, Jonah Gata is another big one. He played at Clemson. Yeah, he's a, one of the best receivers I've ever seen. This is tough. I mean, put me on the spot. Uh, I really like – he's not – he wasn't considered a big recruit, but Cameron Scadabo from Rio Linda High School, one of the best high school football players I've ever seen play. He's killing it at Sac State right now. For just talking football, um, Isaiah Rutherford, another really good guy, uh, committed Notre Dame out of high school. 
And now he's at University of Arizona. You have Latu Latu, who retired. Uh, he was at Washington. I'm, I'm probably going to name 30 guys because I, I mean, I, I, I've covered, covered most of the 2019 guys. Uh, Nagata was in that 2019 class. Then 2020, you have his uh, younger brother, Daniel Nagata, who's a running back at Arizona State. Mm-hmm. Elijah Badger, who's a wide receiver at Arizona State. Uh, who else? Uh, Omar No More. No more lot. Uh, he put a grant. He's now at Arizona State, a defensive end. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting some people. Uh, Ian Book. Uh, Ian Book. I, I saw him play in high school, so that was really, really cool. Baseball, man. Uh, I've seen – I mean, I, Su- Daniel Suzak is probably the best high school baseball player I've seen mm-hmm. come out of the area. He's going to be a first-round pick. Malcolm Moore is another guy who uh, has come into Stanford. He's a senior McClatchy. He's going to be a, probably a first-round pick this spring. Softball, um, the McFarland Twins from Whitney, they're really good. They're our B player of the year. Uh, TJ Nichols at Oakmont is a baseball player. He was also our uh, B player of the year. Who else? Basketball, best basketball players I've seen play. Uh, I think if I had my starting five, I'd go Marcus Bagley from Sheldon, now Arizona State. Jordan Brown, uh, good friend of mine, grew up together in high school. Uh, he's He went to... Nevada, then Arizona, now at Louisiana Lafayette. And I would go Jordan Ford, who's in the G League, played at Folsom. No Blackwell guy I grew up watching. He was a Wood Creek guy. I would go Ty Roberts because that's another guy I grew up with. He's great. Uh, he's at Washington State right now. Um, Issa Silva, he's, now, he's a true freshman at Stanford. He's a great recruit to come out of this area. Probably one of the best basketball players I've seen play. Just, I mean, from a viral standpoint, I think he – was one of the players that when you watched him play, he he had a chance to make a viral play every single time he stepped onto the court. Yeah, I, I'll start by saying I know this is kind of out of <coughs> Plaster County, but Rico Flores from Folsom is one of the best wide receivers I've ever seen, and he's only a junior, so he's 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 definitely. I mean, he has offers from Alabama, LSU, Texas. Walker Lines is another guy who's going to wow some people. He's a tight end at Folsom, uh, and Rico or. Flores. Well, Regal Flores, I mentioned already, but Carlos Wilson, rather, uh, Intercom, he's another four star guy. So, those are probably the best football players we have coming up. Uh, basketball, I think we mentioned, we talked about earlier, Harper Peterson. I mean, I'm, I'm wowed by her. I mean, she's, she's, amazing. She, she's amazing. I mean, the way that she can handle the ball at her size, at her age, is incredible. Uh, she's going to be a really special player to watch. She got play against Oak Ridge uh, during the spring, so I was really impressed with her. I mean softball, and we have so we have so much softball and baseball town. I, I've always said Sacramento is a baseball town. I know we have the River Cats, uh, but I mean this is a baseball town. I we have Torn O'Hara at Rockland, who's come into Stanford. Uh, Malcolm Moore, like I mentioned, he's also come into Stanford, but he could get drafted. So I mean this area has so much talent. I mean I I could probably talk to you guys about for probably five hours about oh, yeah. local guys who or girls rather than who can just be special and make it to the next uh, level. And I'm probably missing like a hundred more. I mean, I'm to go back to your question about the best athletes I've seen play. I mean, J- Jake Brown, I think would probably be the best high school football player I've seen play personally, just because, I mean, he had the great career at Folsom. Then he went on to Washington. Now he's on practice squad. You got to see Cam Smith from Granite Bay. I think he, I mean, he played at USC for all four years. He was a team captain. I know he had a huge breakup game against Utah. Uh, I think he was a sophomore. He had three interceptions. He made it to the NFL, and then he just retired this past offseason due to a heart condition, I believe. Uh, hmm. I mean, if I pull up the top recruits in 20, 2018, that was like Spencer Webb and Isaiah Crocker, who are both at University of Oregon. Uh, 2017... Let's see. Uh, you have DJ Johnson, who uh, started off at the University of Miami. Uh, I think he was committed there at high school. He's another guy that's at Oregon. So I, I think a lot of Oregon guys are – it's kind of a theme. I mean, in 2018, uh, Oregon was getting a lot of the local commits from the Sacramento area. And then in 2020, Arizona State got three of the best. And so in 2021 and 22, their recruiting has kind of slowed down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But I think in probably by next year it's going to pick up again just because – Teams will have more scholarships available. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a great area. And like I said, I mentioned Cameron Scadabo earlier. He was a guy who had no offers out of high school or 
well, he had one and it was Sacramento State and another one that was a lower level, I think it was a Division II school. But Sacramento State really liked him as a player and you don't have to be a big recruit to uh, make him big time. And he's showed just why. I mean, he has played as a Tremetra, a redshirt freshman because he didn't play last year because of COVID season. Sacramento State didn't have a football season. I mean, he's stepped up and he started the last three games and had 100 yards and back-to-back games and had 98 uh, this past weekend. And so you don't have to have four stars or five stars to make it on and play the next level and succeed. So if, if anyone's watching or if any high school player is watching, uh, you don't have to be a big-time recruit to play at the next level. I think high school players have had the biggest impact from the COVID-19 pandemic as far as recruiting goes just because – Colleges can offer the guys who they have already uh, another year of eligibility because of the COVID season last year. And so that guarantees their roster spot. And so what about the other guys who are coming out of high school who are trying to get a scholarship? Well, those numbers are impacted because of the guys who are already there. And so I think that's why recruiting has been impacted the most. So I would say high school players have been affected the most by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I I don't really know when it's going to end because obviously – Guys are going to leave. Guys are going to enter the transfer portal. And so I can really see maybe by next year it will mellow out a little bit and teams will be able to recruit more players. But some schools are only taking 10 to 15 guys where normally they would take probably 25, 30. And I talked to Troy Taylor at Sacramento State. talked to Dan Hawkins at UC Davis. talked to Brandon Huffman, who's the national 247 recruiting analyst. And they gave me great answers because – a guy like Dan Hawkins, he said he's all for the transfer portal. He said, I think it's a good thing for college football. And then Troy Taylor had the mindset of you have to adapt or adapt or die. So he has adapted. And he said that they love recruiting high school kids still because they want to develop these kids. But obviously Sacramento State has gone guys through the portal. Same with UCD. But going back to your point, I think it's a good opportunity for players because we never know what's going to happen, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. Most guys – to even get to take official visits at the school they want to go to. So they're going in blind. They don't know these coaches face-to-face. They've only had Zoom interactions with them or text messages with them. And so I think it's a good thing for college football to have the portal. Obviously, people might have different thoughts on it, and that's okay. It's their opinion. But I think ultimately it's a good thing for college football because we shouldn't be punishing guys who make decisions at 16, 17 years old that they should have to stay at a four-year school just because – uh, their recruit, their coach that recruit them said they should because if coaches can leave free willingly uh, without dropping a hat, why can't players? So I think that's the mindset I have. I mean, it's incredible what West Park did. I know people say, oh, they played in the worst league in the Sacramento area. I mean, to only have sophomores and juniors and still win the league, it's incredible. I mean, they had they lost the first four games of the season. It was easy to put aside this season and say, hey, this is a rebuilding year. Uh, we don't need to – we're looking ahead for the future. And when I talked to Jason Tenner, who's the West Park coach, he told me a lot of people said to him that the future is – for most people, it's the next few years. Well, he told me the future is now. And they obviously they won, they won their league. They lost the first game to Placer. But, you know, I mean, it's a huge building block for that program. And obviously someone has, who's grown up in West Roseville has seen that school develop and come about – the facilities are amazing. I mean, you look at the facilities, it's 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 mind-boggling. I wish I had that those facilities when I was in high school because if I was a uh, high schooler and I had the choice to go to West Park or any other school, I'd pick West Park in a heartbeat just because of the facilities. They're amazing. And I think the same can be said about 12 Bridges, the new high school. I think they're planning on building a new school in Folsom in the near near future, but I'm not sure exactly when, probably on the other side of Highway 50. But at the same time, I mean, the schools are going to develop, and it's hard to build a culture. It's hard to build that winning establishment over time. It's going to become a day where West Park is going to be a powerhouse, I really think. I, I would not doubt it. They have the facilities. They have athletes coming in. They have people obviously moving in to West Roseau from the Bay Area and other cities around Sacramento. So don't be surprised if West Park turns into the powerhouse in five, ten years. So I would not be surprised at all. Probably the Olympics just because of the different sports and how it's the best in the world at every position or not every, every sport per se. And so I just think that 
would be an amazing experience. I know it's in LA in 2028, so that's obviously a gold mine. I think the Super Bowl would probably be second just because, I mean, it's the Super Bowl. I think everybody would love to go to Super Bowl in their lifetime. So, I mean, I think it'd probably be Olympics first and Super Bowl close second. 